Today we'll be making the M26 Pershing. The M26 Pershing was developed in World War II and it was supposed to be an upgrade for the Sherman tanks. But only a handful of them were in service during World War II. But this tank is probably one of my most favorite tanks. This is because it's one of the first tanks I've ever seen. And because it was one of the first tanks to have a gyro stabilizer so it could shoot on the move. This tank was requested by me because I really wanted to make it. And also because I wanted to use it in my upcoming stop motion. I did make another M26 Pershing before this, but that tank looked like crap and it didn't look anything like the actual tank. Anyways, let's get into the tutorial. To start off, here's a reference image. This was a tank I've been planning to make for a while, so I wanted to make the tank as accurate as possible. The first thing I do is I cut out a strip of cardboard that will be the width of the tank. Then I got a piece of cardboard the same width and I cut this angled trapezoidish shape on the top. This is because the M26 Pershing has this little bump in the front for some reason. Then I glued on some more angled pieces and I had the front. I also glued on some pieces for the back. For the top piece I measured how long it had to be and then I just cut a circle into it. This will be for the turret mechanism. Now it was time to make the actual turret. First thing I do is I cut out this circle. Then I glue on a bunch of these little strips of cardboard onto the sides and bend them. This is because the bottom part of the turret is actually curved inwards so this will be able to make it curve inward. You just want to glue the walls of the turret to the little support thingies. You also want the walls of the turret to point out backwards because the M26 Pershing has a back place that sticks out. I cover up the back so it looks like this. I also wanted to add a army man into the turret. This is one of my custom printed tank commanders. So I make sure that he can fit and then I cut out a hatch for him. I also added a cupola. At this time I realized I had to make one of those special turret mechanisms. This is made to make the toy soldier fit inside the tank. So basically, you want the toy soldier to be able to go through the tank without disturbing the rotation of the tank. To do this, I cut a hole into the bottom of the turret that could fit the army man legs. Then I cut a ring around it that should outline the circle that I cut out. Once you glued on the ring, you can cut out a hole onto the top of the tank that's the same width as the ring. It should fit like this. Then I cut out these other pieces of cardboard to keep the ring on the other side of the hole. After the turret is secured onto the top of the tank, I glue on the top piece. And since the turret mechanism is done and I don't have to reach inside the tank anymore, I can glue on the sides. All you have to do is get the whole entire tank and glue it onto the side of a piece of cardboard and then cut it out. For the gun, I just use these common mechanical pencils. To make the muzzle break, I bored a hole into the more thicker part of the pencil. Then I glued the gun on. Now I glued on the wheels which were just cut up foam boards. And foam is better for making wheels because it's thicker than cardboard. And it's also more sturdy. But I don't use foam to make my tanks because it's really hard to cut and also because it looks really ugly. Sometimes I see people make bunkers and like houses and bases out of foam and it just looks really ugly. After that I add the armor plates that cover the wheels. I also glue on these side skirts which are really weirdly shaped. And now you're done with the whole entire tank. Just time to add details. 
These are just gluing on random pieces of cardboard to make the tank look less flat. Some of the biggest details are the hatch on the top, this bump in the front, and also this extra engine on the back. And also I forgot to say the machine gun on the front. When you're all done with that, it's time to make the tracks. The tracks are made by peeling some corrugated cardboard. As you can see, I have a huge sheet of it already peeled, so it takes less time to make it. The final step is to paint it. The tracks were painted black, while the rest of the tank was painted a yellowish green. When you're done painting the tank, you can add on the tracks. And for one final detail, I used a little toothpick to paint on the American stars. I used to use a little paintbrush to paint on the stars, but that was really inaccurate because of how thick the paintbrush is, so a toothpick works pretty well. And now you're basically done. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. The next tutorial will probably be the Chaffee or the Jeeps. So stay tuned. I also want to say I will do all of your requests eventually so yeah I have a whole list so I'll do them. But right now I'm prioritizing tanks because I'll be making a tank stop motion. Anyways thank you all for watching.